Walt Disney World is home to so many different types of incredible attractions. From slow moving dark rides like Pirates of the Caribbean to the immersive action packed rides like Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. There's something for the whole family, young and old. Some rides, however, might lead to some apprehensive potential riders. The thrill rides at Disney World are exciting experience from anybody building up to the courage to ride them. What's up everybody, it's Nick from Houdat Travel. Younger guests might be scared or just plain excited. To us, it was important that we introduced our little man in a way that didn't scar him from riding rides again. So fear not, we are here to help. We have put together a guide to the thrill rides at Magic Kingdom in an attempt to introduce these exhilarating attractions to those who might be a little bit curious about them. The Magic Kingdom has the most family-friendly thrill rides in the resort. This is the perfect park to introduce your little ones to these types of rides. The Barnstormer should definitely be your first stop. It's a compact kiddie coaster that takes you along for a stunt gone wrong with the great Goofini. Come on, who doesn't like Goofy and his antics? This coaster has small drops, but nothing too scary at all. The height requirement for this attraction is 35 inches, so it's a great starting point for any preschool-aged kids. The ride is just over one minute in length and is a great way to be able to expose your kiddos to exactly what a roller coaster really is. And since it is only just a minute long, if things go bad, well, at least it's over quickly. Once your kids have mastered the Barnstormer, it's time to move up to the next level. Just a short walk away in Fantasyland is Seven Dwarves Mine Train. Those who are 38 inches and above can ride this surprisingly smooth ride through the Seven Dwarves Diamond Mine. This coaster is a little bit longer than the Barnstormer at about 2 minutes and 50 seconds. The queue for the ride can be rather long, but it does have some interactive parts to it that do help pass the time. Oh, oh, quick tip. Try to have a large group spin all seven of the barrels at once when you're inside the building. Trust me, it's worth it. Uh, all right, back to, the, back to the rest of this. The ride is split up into three sections. The first is a typical coaster, but about 50 seconds into the ride, there's a dark ride component, which you will find yourself inside the mine with the dwarves. This is followed by another section of roller coaster. Just as a quick note. Just a quick note. The ride vehicles do sway back and forth as well, just like a minecart. So it's just another fun added feature to the ride. I did notice that when my little man first started riding this, he would get thrown around a little bit and did hit his head on the side of the cart. I'd actually wrap my arm around him and place my hand on the side of the cart to make sure that his head didn't hit and that he was all right. Next, if you're looking to up the thrill level just a little bit, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad will be your next stop. Yes, pun is intended with the railroad thing. The wildest ride in the wilderness has a height requirement of 40 inches. My little man has always called the ride the fast choo-choo. Well, because it's, you're riding a train. And it is just a little bit faster than the train that circles the park. This ride does start to be a little more of the style of a fast coaster. The drops are a little bigger and the cars do whip you around just a little bit more. So having a little more neck control is definitely necessary for your kiddos. Also, the lap constraints are for both passengers. So people like me with bigger legs, well, you will have to make sure that you keep an eye on your little one because the lap bar will be nowhere near their legs. This ride clocks in at just about three minutes. There are much bigger drops and a slight slowdown as you go up a large hill in the middle of the ride, but for the most part, Big Thunder Mountain is a full-fledged big thrill ride. The next step in thrill rides is definitely out of this world. Yes, Space Mountain definitely ups the ante with changing one major thing. You are in complete and utter darkness. I will admit this did pose a little bit challenging for our little man to overcome, but we did make it through. With Space Mountain, you will board a rocket that zips through space in the dark. This ride features sudden big drops and stops in near complete darkness. Those seeking to travel through space must be 44 inches or taller. And it can be a little scary to newcomers. And the ride vehicles is set up in a single line. In other words, you will not be able to sit next to your little one. You will be either directly in front of or behind them. Personally, I, 
I suggest being behind them. That way you can kind of put your hand on them. That's, uh, that's definitely what I did. So you will definitely want to inform your child of what they are going to be in for during this two minute and 30 second ride. This brings us to the newest ride, which also happens to have the largest height requirement in the park at 48 inches, and that is Tron Light Cycle Run. Once you board a light cycle, which will have you positioned as if you were riding a motorcycle, you will be launched at nearly 60 miles an hour. Once launched on the coaster, you will ride outside of the ride building under a canopy. Now, I will admit, nighttime is an amazing time to ride this ride, since the canopy is lit up with different colors. You'll be whisked back inside the ride building and go down drops and quick turns, but it's all over in under a minute. Our little man is not quite tall enough to ride this ride yet, but he is already excited about it and honestly asked to see how tall he is every time we're there to see if he, how close he is to riding the new ride. Now, we do also use this opportunity to remind him that he needs to eat his fruits and veggies so that he can grow big enough to ride the ride. I know, I get it, but hey, anything that works to get him to eat those veggies. The rides at Walt Disney World Resort are all thrilling in their own way, but making sure you don't scar your child from riding any of the rides, well, that's rather important. Whether you're on a slow-moving tour of a haunted mansion or your elevator is dropping 13 floors at the Hollywood Tower of Terror, there really is something for everybody as long as you prepare your kids for what to expect. I hope this guide gets your little adrenaline junkie ready for anything that these thrill rides can throw at them. Now, if you liked this video and it helped, please give it a huge thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and spreads my video out to more folks so they can get helped. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more info about travel and also Disney tips with little ones. With that being said, thanks everybody, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.